What's up, guys? Oh, Sean, over here. Yep. Uh, before we get into the uh, fight talk in your upcoming title fight, I have to ask, uh, your name's on the canvas, we've Look, noticed. Next looks to good, huh? Sweet Sweat and Giant Pink Letters. How'd that come about? Yeah, we're dropping a limited edition, you know, Sweet Sweat, sweet sweat Sugar collaboration, you know, coming soon. Can't say too much about it right now, but how sweet is that? See Sugar in the octagon right there with Sweet Sweat, nice and pink. I love it. Uh, staying on that, obviously the title shot was always your ultimate goal in the UFC, but when you're getting all of these these opportunities, like your name on the canvas, I think like only only really Connor has really had that, like with Proper 12 and stuff like that. So, what are the like? Are there other goals you're trying to hit besides these title shots? Um, you know, I think title shots most important right now. With that comes a lot of other opportunities. So, main focus right now is on Aljamain. That's it. So sticking with the Aljamain, then uh, we're only obviously a, a, a month or so away from your fight. A month and a half. Six away, weeks. Six weeks away from your fight. How's camp been? Uh, like, could you like how like how is camp? It's been really good. It's been longer. You know, it's five rounds. It's my first five round fight, so definitely started a little bit sooner. Um, I've been in, in camp for about six, seven weeks already. Definitely started sparring further out than I usually do. Um, you know, it, it's going to be it's going to be fun. I'm excited. Well, Dominic Cruz has said in the past when he's like, there's a significant difference in preparing for a five-round fight than a three-round fight. So besides the, the sparring earlier and Ben in camp longer, are there any major differences in this camp? That is pretty major. Just, yeah, the extra two rounds. You know, three rounds compared to five rounds is a lot. Ten minutes of fighting is a long time. So uh, just the extra sparring, you know, the extra sprints, the extra everything that goes into the, a title fight camp is uh, it's interesting. It's fun. And, uh, Aljamain's obviously, he's been the champ for a while. I think he's tied or might have the record for most title defenses. Is this a guy that you think you would have to beat twice in a row? Because normally when you get these long reigning champions, if you beat them, they can oftentimes get an immediate rematch. Do you think this is a guy that you're going to have to beat twice? I, I know he said after this fight he's going up to 45 regardless. So this is a risky fight for him. He could go up right now, be champ, and, and get that potential, you know, champ champ fight. Um, but he's risking it because he knows he's going to get paid. This is a big, big fight for him pay-per-view wise. As far as beating him twice, there's so many interesting guys in the division right now. Um, I know Figueredo's fight Dominic Cruz. Um, so there, there's some interesting fights around the corner. So I, I'd say no. Go in there, get the job done. He goes up, goes up to 45. No one cares. And, and then I keep fighting. What do you make of this Corey Sanhagen Umar fight? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. it doesn't make sense in my eyes. You know, I think we're just look at fighting, look at business differently, and uh, you know, I think it's a very poor decision. Go out there and win. It's 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 not. You know, Umar is good. Beating Umar is big, but it's he, he's you know, Cheeto. He just worked Cheeto, and Cheeto was about to fight Henry, who just fought for the title. So I just think it's a you know, poor decision on his managing part, management part, but. Everyone, you know, do their own thing. Well, it was just actually revealed that Cheeto's going to fight Pedro Munoz now on your card. What do you make of that matchup? Yeah, two dudes I finished. Interesting fight. Uh, you know, very... Pedro looked good against Gutierrez, so I think... And Cheeto looked really good against Corey. Just kidding. He did not. He looked horrible. He literally didn't look like he knew how to wrestle. Um, so, just going off their last two fights, I think Pedro can go in there and get the job done. The final one for me, um, we just saw Robbie Lawler retire after a big knockout. We saw the, the rarely emotional Robbie Lawler. So I'm curious, what was your reaction to arguably one of the better retirements in MMA history? Yeah, we were just driving over watching on the phone. And uh, that's crazy. Tim said he made his UFC debut in like uh, 2001, 2002. That's insane. Yeah, that's crazy. It's, it, yeah, good for him. Is Sean over here? I don't know if you've taken a look at the betting odds, but Aljamain's almost like a three to one favorite. You're one of the most, if not the most popular bantamweight fighter in the division. Does the that most. surprise you uh, to see the odds that wide? Not really. I mean, look at look at who he's beat. Look at the guys he's, he's beat in the last four or five fights. And, you know, my best win is over Peter Yan. Very close fight, very tough fight. So, you know, looking at it like that, it makes sense. But, you know, that's what, that was what Peter versus me was, the same odds, something. You know, I think they were even worse at one point, so. I like that. It fuels me. Um, it's exciting to go in there and fight the best bantamweight in the world. I go out there and put his lights out. What does that make me? Um, Henry Cejudo, we mentioned there, was supposed to fight uh, Chito Vera. It looks like they're still trying to set up that fight with Marab. Are you worried that that fight might never happen? Because it seemed like there was a lot of heat. It would be a good fight for everyone, you and Henry fight. Um, 
I don't know if Henry's come. Yeah, that. I mean, his shoulder. I think he's had issues with his shoulder in the past. Who knows how bad it is right now? I, I don't. I personally don't think we see Henry back. So, but if he if he does come back, gets a win. Very very interesting fight. Me versus Henry is a huge fight. And just last one for me. What would it mean to win a UFC title and being a veteran of the Contender Series? You know, we saw Jamal Hill win the title. I know that's something you're really proud of. What would that mean to you to win it? Just as being one of the fighters that came from that show. Yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, I think the Contender Series is the best platform to get into the UFC, and being there early on was is super cool. I feel like it was so long ago. Uh, it was my first fight in Vegas. I think I fought here ten times now, so it feels like a second home. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be really cool to defend my belt here in Vegas in December if all goes well. Definitely not overlooking Aljamain Sterling. I understand how good he is. So, um, but if all goes well, I'd like to you know bring the belt back back here and, and, and defend it. Sean, um, do you secretly did you secretly want your, your first title um, chance to be in Vegas? You know, all, all your fights basically have been in Vegas fighting in Boston like did you want your first title shot to be in Vegas yeah not secretly I would love my my first title defense to be in Vegas you know I got resorts world right there fight week make it nice and easy for me head over there after after party at Zook which is also happening tonight but yeah Vegas I would love to I love fighting in Vegas I mean I'm very excited to fight in Boston though I really am but Vegas is just, it's just something different here do you have anything uh, planned for your hair um, I don't really have a color. Who knows? Who knows what we're gonna do? It's kind of always last second, but it'll be beautiful as always. And then finally, um, Aljamain came out and said that this fight is against his will. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that, I mean yeah, that sucks. I mean, yeah, I mean I don't really. It's a shitty position for him to be in. You know, I didn't I didn't choose that. Like I said, he could have stayed the champ, moved up, fought winner tonight potentially, and then. But, like I said, that's a big pay-per-view for him. He's going to probably double, at least double, what he just did against Henry. So, you know, he's making financial decisions right now. You don't get to be in this game for too long. You don't get opportunities to fight one of the biggest stars too often. And, and he's not passing it up. Thanks. Hey, Sean, back here. Sean Becker, um, a lot of times fighters, before they win the physical belt, they already have the mindset of a champion and they believe that they're the champion. Do you believe that you are the champion despite not having the physical belt? I believe I'm capable of becoming the champion 100%. You have to kind of get into that mindset. I had that mindset going into a, you know, a bunch of my last fights, definitely against Peter Yan. I knew how dangerous he was and I knew I had to bring a certain level of focus and discipline to that fight. Um, so yeah, I definitely have that mindset. And then also, last one for me, I know a lot of times, you know, fighters, they like to visualize the fights and sequences through, before they actually happen. And we've seen people like Israel Adesanya, they get emotional when they just think about their journey and they think about the fight itself. For you, whenever you do visualize this fight, what are the emotions like? <sighs> yeah, I, I think there's, you know, there's still six weeks of work. We still got a long time. The closer I get to fights, the, the more I can kind of visualize and, and, and see what's happening. I have a good idea of how this fight's going to play out, but fighting's fucking crazy. So, you know, you almost have to be prepared for, for everything. Obviously, Aljo's a very heavy grappling guy. So, you know, I got, I got a, I, I see it playing out a certain way. You know, the closer the fight gets, the, the more clear that vision becomes. Sean, just here, uh, you said about how you think the, the fight will play out. Where do you see yourself in this fight? Wrestling. I'm going to wrestle fuck them. Just jokes. I'm going to strike. I'm going to do what I do. I mean, it's no secret. It's a striker versus grappler matchup. Um, that's it. I'm going to go out there and try to put his lights out. I do that every time I fight. Is there Has there been anybody that's hurt Peter Yan? Anyone that's been able to catch him, crack him? I dropped him to a knee in the second round. I can find people's chins. I do find people's chins. That's what, I built a career off knocking people out in the first round. So he cuts a lot of weight. When you cut a lot of weight, you know, that brain liquid goes away. Doesn't take many shots. Could take one shot right on the chin to put him down. And I know I'm capable of that. So that's, you know, that's how I see it going down. And with his comments saying about, you know, that this fight, this title defense was against his will, does that worry you at all in, in terms of perhaps injuries or, or, or how his mindset is going into this one? No, not really. I mean, I, he's been very vocal. He's got, a, you know, some kind of bicep injury or something. Um, he said that before the last fight against Henry. He built an excuse to say, ah, I've got these injuries and I'm going to this fight I, and I beat him. And he's like, well, you guys already knew. I, you know, I said I was injured. I didn't want to fight. Built an excuse is what it sounds like. Um, 
but we'll, we'll yeah. I don't. I, he's gonna make the fight. He's gonna make the fight. He's gonna get paid. He's get. He's gonna make it there. Um, we'll see how how good he shows up. But I do think he's taking this fight very serious. I do think he looks at me as very dangerous. Um, so I expect you know the best Aljamain to show up. Sorry, just last one. Can you put into words how much the title you know capturing the title? How much? Yeah, it would be wild, you know, started kickboxing, started training when I was 16 years old, you know, win the UFC belt when I'm 28 would be would be awesome, but I really do feel like this is just kind of the beginning of my career, I have a long time, you know, this, the UFC's got a couple superstars, but you know, this is a, I'm a big star right now, August 19th, I become a superstar and take over the sport, and that's the plan. Sean, going off that, uh, it's kind of a perfect segue. You've been dealing with fame for a while now, but when you get a UFC belt, it kind of goes to the next level. How are you preparing yourself for, you know, the people who are going to come out of the woodwork and trying to pull you this direction and that direction? How do you think you'll handle it? I bought a farm recently, so I got cows and I got a cow and some chickens. So I'm going to just be a farmer for a little bit. And uh, I feel like that'll keep me grounded. All jokes aside, I really do think, uh, you know, staying out there, I'm just staying, staying. I got a lot to work on. I still, I love the grind. So, you know, just, just doing that, being a family man and, and staying in the gym. That's, that's, you know, if I can stay in the gym, I can become one of the best to ever do it. Um, if I start getting distracted, start taking too many opportunities, you know, there's too many good guys in this division that want what I would have at the, you know what I mean? So I got to stay focused, stay grinding and, and just stay, dialed in, so I'm, I, that's what I plan on doing. Yeah, I, w I mean, I fought October in Abu Dhabi and Went back to the gym, started grappling, 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 grappling. I, I understand where Aljo wants to take this fight, and uh, that's what I've been doing. So it's been grappling. Yeah, I never, I mean, I had two years off, came back, smoked the dude in the first round. Ring rust is never really an issue if you're, if you're training, if you're in the gym. So I don't think, that's not really an issue. It's more mostly just sparring. I know, I don't spar outside of camp, but I did start sparring in this camp a lot sooner, a lot further out from the fight than I usually do. So I feel like I'm gonna be just dialed in on point and, and find his chin. Sean, can I just uh, ask your opinion with, with those two dudes, it's just a coin flip, really. I mean, who, who shows up with less injuries and, and had a better training camp that night? Who shows up? Those dudes are both so good. Um, yeah, coin flip, I don't know. Uh, Sean, one more. Um, of everyone that Aljamain could fight in Bantamweight and Featherweight, do you think that you're the biggest fight for him in both weight classes? The biggest fight, yeah, for sure. I think I'm, I really do believe I'm one of the biggest stars in the sport right now. So yeah, I think it, I think it's clear he's not going up trying to fight someone else. He's, he's fighting me for that reason specifically. I am the biggest star that he could fight right now.